Hi, Michael Fairman, and I'm on the set of The Young and the Restless with Melody Thomas Scott, such a dear friend who's celebrating her 40th year as Nikki in Genoa City. That is an unbelievable milestone, which we're going to talk about and get into. But I really felt that we should start this off. Um, we lost our beloved Christoph St. John uh, last week. Um, we are all dealing with the grief and trying to wrap our head around the situation. And he was a dear friend of mine and a dear friend of Melody's and a colleague for so many years. Melody, how are you doing with this? And what can you say about um, Christoph? I have, I have tried to remain so stoic because you had to be. You know, there was work to be done, shows to be shot, scenes to be played. So I, I really haven't let myself go there yet. But um, sometimes you can't control stoicism. And when you just started to talk about him, I started to feel myself go. So I'm trying to be um, strong in this, but uh, strength does us no good. You know, we can't change the outcome. I adored him. I love him to bits. Um, I mean, you know, we all knew and loved him. I, I loved mean, him. He so. was just, in some ways, such this big, gloppy bear, you know, just throw his paws around you, those big Kristoff hugs. Um, I loved working with him, such a wonderful actor. I don't even know if he knew how good he was. I saw my mother. Oh my God. When? A couple of months ago. She was barely hanging on, Nikki. Oh, I am so sorry. I got there in time, you know? I made peace with her before she died. But that's good. And that's very important. I just had no idea. Again, I, I'm so sorry. I'm not. And I didn't tell you this to get your sympathy. This experience has totally changed me, Nikki. It steered me in a different direction. I want to make the most out of my time while I'm here, spend it with family and friends. I want to leave my imprint before I go. As we all do. It was so natural. It required so little effort. At least it seemed to require little effort. That's the sign That's of a good actor. actor. And you got to work um, with him. Uh, in and his, I'm his so grateful that I did. You did. Um, yeah, we had, we had something in common there for a while our characters and... Uh, the alcoholism is what we're talking right, about. Right. And they were drawn to each other at one point. And I we think you had said a in very the, interesting yeah. chemistry that was unexpected um, because we could both trust each other to give the other actor what they needed in the scene for emotion or for whatever you're going for. Some actors don't give you anything. And I still love them, but some just <laughs> don't. I mean, that's this whole thing about chemistry. It's like... Where does it come from? What is it? Why? It just is. If it's there, it's there. And Christoph and I had it. So it was such a joy to have him in the scene because I could completely trust him. If we went off book, I knew he'd keep going and I'd keep going and it would make it even a better scene sometimes. Um, just such a loss and such a tragedy. And um, I'm trying, I, on Twitter, I'm trying to help out with... Mia, have you seen that I have movie seen that? Mia's thing, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I, in my grief, I posted little clips of us, me and him together, that That's were just nice. really defined who he was as a friend, as a man, as a talent, and I just continually want to pay tribute to this great man. So in honor of Christoph, um, I know he would want me to be doing this with you, so we are going to now talk about 40 years of Nikki. You were the second Nikki, yes. actually. There was Erica Hope Correct. who played Nikki, and you came on in 1979. Mm -hmm. Were you on the Waltons right before that? I was. I, I had a recurring role on the Waltons as Ben's girlfriend. Ben's girlfriend. <laughs> um, oh, her name escapes me now, but I um, eventually, had I been able to stay on the show, then those characters did get married. But of course, when I got this show, you you're no longer available to do recurrings on anything. But I, I enjoyed my time at the Waltons. It was really fun. Wonderful people. When you were told that Nikki was a stripper, mm -hmm. what was your initial reaction? So you, you find out you're cast in this part. Or did you find out you were the stripper? How did it the all go The stripper now? didn't happen until <laughs> maybe a year in. Um, and I, I guess I have never told you this story. No. Um, probably about a year in. So I would say 1980. I 
and only I am called down to the executive producer's office, which was John Conboy at the time. And I've decided, well, I guess this is it. I mean, I'm getting canned, obviously. I mean, any actor who's called into the EP's office is like, this is it. So I'm sitting there across the desk from him, and he looked at me for a moment, and he said, Melody, what would you think of Nikki being a mud wrestler? (laughs) Well, I was just so thrilled (laughs) that I still had a job. I thought, oh, that would be great, fine, wonderful, no problem. So um, I leave his office, and and I immediately start going to all the mud wrestling clubs up on Sunset, because that was the thing at the time. I was doing research. (laughs) I'd never been in a mud wrestling place. I had no idea what it was about. So I was right in there in the front row getting the mud on my face. And maybe two weeks later, the network heard about this wacky idea. And they said, "Uh uh-uh, she's not going to be a mud wrestler. Um, So I don't know if they suggested the stripping or if that was Bill's backup that he had in his pocket. But I've never understood why is one worse than the other. You know, (laughs) don't they seem (laughs) equally (laughs) offensive to some people? Did I hear at one point they were thinking of having her strip again, but later in her, wasn't there something and you were like not going to have it? That's right. And I very rarely put the kibosh on anything on this show, but I was 48 years old (laughs) and, and, uh, the head writer called me. I was up in hair and makeup. No wonder you heard it. Anything in hair and makeup (laughs) spreads, you know, because I was right there and, uh, they heard me say, uh, I'm 48 years old. That's just not happening. And of course, they're saying, "Oh, but you still look so good." And, you th- and it's like, Mm-mm, not buying any of that, even if it's true. Thank you very much. But it's not going to get <laughs> me to welcome. strip again. So that that was that. Now, on that note, have you have there been other stories along the way that have been like, "I am not. No, no, no. I cannot mm. believe this." And do you? Well. I've never outright f- refused to do a storyline, but when you say that, what comes to my mind is when Nikki was running for senator. <laughs> One of the great that, That's <laughs> like the last thing she would ever pursue in her life. We just had to, you know, get through it somehow. And Nikki's not a politician. Speeches. I'm not a politician. So there was no hope for me to make that a good storyline. <laughs> <laughs> but they have thrown... The kitchen sink at Nikki, too. Which they have given her MS. She True. has her battles with alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember it all seemed to start, I think it was some 30 years ago when she fell off the horse. Yes. That was really a key point that really changed the character, wouldn't Who you say? Who knew it was going to lead to this? I certainly didn't. Uh, yeah, you're right. That happened... Um, I believe I fell off the horse in the same time that Victor was having the affair with Ashley, and I'm freaking out with jealousy. Um, Although we didn't see her fall, but we did do that remote up in Carmel where we were on the horse. Um, But anyway, who knew? I I don't know if Bill was prescient enough to think that that's going to carry forward. I think he just needed me to get a little zonked out on pills and alcohol <laughs> at that time for that story. And it, and it worked. It was great. But can you imagine all of this time that you played the parts? You know how the fans of this show love boozing Nikki. They just yes. love, they do. They, I, they I've want, heard about the I, drinking I, games. The drinking games. <laughs> <laughs> how does that make you? F- okay, so what do you? what's your takeaway from that, that they do like that? And is it difficult for you to play? They love it. And... No, I don't think it's difficult for me to play. That's just my opinion. I, I have great fun with it. I think it's wonderful. I think you're the best. Every, um, people say, like, you know, that you're the best uh, drunk on TV. <laughs> she is. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> but that's a compliment because, um, you know. It's fun. I, I have fun doing it. And, and, <laughs> and she ends up running people over and getting like it's like, That's true. I, anything can happen if you're drunk, I suppose. What do you think when you found out she's a concert pianist? That was not news because even in the very beginning they had me play. When when Casey and I were living in that little cottage, Her sister, Casey. Uh, yes, Nikki's sister, they often had me play the piano. I don't know for what purpose, other than the fact that Bill enjoyed that I could play. Um, so I played quite a bit in the earlier days, and then it was forgotten. 
maybe we had different writers and it was just forgotten for a while. And then, uh, yeah, they revived that for, I guess, the MS storyline or before that? Yep, yeah. I think it was um, before and then the MS. Yeah, did it again. yeah. I'm still, uh, I'm still wondering if the MS, if there is a really good reason for that in the future. Is something going to happen to me because of that? I don't know. And because it, it came on, all of a sudden they had her have this. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of jarring for you too? Well, I just thought, like we all do, we, uh, you think, oh, well, this must be the beginning of some story. Right. But I don't think that has happened yet. No. So. Bill Bell created yeah. the ship. What do you think Bill would say to you today with your 40th anniversary being February 20th? I want to know what you think if he could be here with us today. What do you say? Melody, what would he say to you? Melody, <laughs> I knew you could do it, and you're still captivating, because that was his word, at least for me. At the very first YNR anniversary party at the Beverly Hills Hotel, I was wearing a green dress, remember the whole thing? And he asked me to dance, and I had just recently gotten the part, and Lee's there, and, and I, oh I, I, I'm 22, I, 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 oh, okay. okay. And we danced, and he just stared at me, and every few seconds he'd say, Captivating, simply captivating. And I thought, wow, okay, I think I'm going to keep this job for a while. <laughs> so sweet. So sweet. sweet. So sweet. And I think he would have tears in his eyes. I think he would be so proud because he plucked me out of many girls who wanted this part. And he also told my agent that the other girls were prettier, but that I was the better actress. <laughs> And, uh, you know, okay. she was very blunt. And she, she told it like it was. And it's like, well, well thank okay. you. Thanks. But, but now you're an know, icon. Just... You're an icon on a daytime drama series, beloved by millions of fans, so integral to the show. Everybody wants to see what Nikki does. Yes. And that's attributed a lot to what you've done with it. I mean, they can write, different regimes come in and write it. Yes. But you have to continually play it. And I wonder... When you have the issue of different writers, mm -hmm. is that become difficult for you when you're saying this is not how she would sometimes, do this? Sometimes, yeah. yeah, certainly sometimes. And not just me, the other actors will too. They'll just say, this is not a line that would ever come out of my character's mouth. And it, you know, it has yeah. to be fixed. You can't go on. You have to fix blatant mistakes like that. Right. So um, I, I guess it was fate. The whole thing obviously was fated for me. Because I didn't even want to take the job because, you know, I wanted to do the sitcom pilot. That's all old news. We all know about that. We know about the sitcom. Um, so, but, I mean, I could have chosen that part, and that didn't even sell. And I'd still be out tramping the streets trying to find a job as an actress. <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said about daytime, the continual well, work yeah. of it. No I, I think that was one of the reasons my agent pushed me to take this job. She said, take the soap. It's only three years. You'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, only three years, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three became six, became nine. Here we are at 40. Um, man, it, is, it is quite a ride. I'll so we're going into your 40th anniversary episode, and Nikki is in jail. Yes. And there's a standalone episode that I cannot wait for everybody to see featuring Melody. And what I understand, without ruining it, is she flashes back on her life through it. And, yes. And we have cl retro clips. Oh, and so many clips. How was it for you to perform in this episode? Um, it actually was difficult because um, we don't get to see the flashbacks or even hear the flashbacks. Back in the day, we used to at least hear the flashbacks so we would know what we're supposed to be crying about or know who we're supposed to be focusing on. Nowadays, because we shoot so quickly, um, what I'm hearing, you really want to know yeah, what I'm hearing? Of course. I'm in the jail cell. Okay, it's time for a flashback. The stage manager will snap, indicating we're going into flashback, and then he'll say, and I'll count you out. I have like five seconds to conjure up the emotion or whatever I am thinking before we move into the next one. He'll say, in flashback, I'll cue you out in five, four, three, two, and on to the next. This is how we did it. <laughs> so you have, you have, have you seen it? No. I, I have not seen the finished show. Will you watch it? Oh. Course. So you will watch I your work. I cannot wait to see I that. can't wait to see this show. I am so excited about the old clips. And any longtime viewer will just be in heaven, whether they're crying or not. And they will be. They'll oh, be crying. Yeah. They'll be laughing. They'll be doing everything. But it's clips that have never been aired since they were first aired. So it's not your usual, oh, Victor Nicky wedding. It's stuff we have never seen before. And, of course, Victor Nicky's in there. 
And what's interesting in the current story, what did you think about the whole, so of course you've been with these four women, the four of you have been hiding this dead body after you clobbered JT over the head yes. with the fire poker, defending her daughter. No! Then you buried the body, the four of you, working with Gina, Sharon, uh, Amelia, and you. The fearsome four. The fearsome four, <laughs> which has been great hijinks. But then when push came to shove, she, where we are now, she did not indicate that they had anything to do with it. She took it all herself and made her own story that she went after him later and buried him in the thing. And because, because she was trying to protect Victor. Right. On, on that confession. Then the next confession. <laughs> Confessions of a housewife. Was to protect Victoria. Um, was the, I, oh, the third, the third one, it was way too late for the third one. It's like, we know you're lying. <laughs> so she's in hot water here. She's in jail. <laughs> she is in jail awaiting trial for murder. Not, not a good prospect. Not, 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 <laughs> and not, and she was drinking before that, right? Uh, she was drinking right before she got hit by the car by her grandson and went into a coma. <laughs> Does that sound exceptionally the, weird to you? No, it sounds no, right on par with, totally. with, with it. Um, so I want to show you some photos. Okay. Of, over the years, Nikki has had some leading men. She's oh. had some men in her life. Mm. I think we should take a look at them. And I want you to comment to me what you remember, why Nikki was into that guy, and then what you thought about them. Well, I think a writer decided well, that, that I'll try. <laughs> should I put my glasses on? Put your on? glasses on. I found some good photos. Did you? I hope you like them. All right. Hey, this last week, people have been coming up to me with photos I haven't seen in decades, so it's really fun. I love it. Loving it. Bobby, Did I get to see it first? Bobby Marcino <gasps> and Nikki. Oh, isn't he cute? I thought you looked fabulous. Well, I'm okay. <laughs> But, I mean, you can't be in a picture with John Enos and look better than he does. That's a good picture. And I loved him in spite of that. <laughs> um, You're like, you prettier I, than I, me. I adore him to this day. I haven't seen him in a long time. Now, this one, um, your gynecologist. It is? is Heath Wait a minute Kizier. now. That, it, it doesn't look like him. That's Heath? Oh, yeah, okay, I see it now. He. What was the deal with that? <laughs> Well, I know what you're getting to. Um, I don't know why Bill made him my gynecologist. It's like, I don't know if men don't really understand that the last man alive that a woman wants to have an affair with it's is her gynecologist. gynecologist. And I, I was laughing and joking with him about it, with Bill saying, anything, urologist is, anything would be better. But of course it was already established and that was that. What, what was it like working with him? Do you remember? He was just sweet as can be. He was uh, fairly new to this whole business, so we had to guide him along and teach him, and uh, he did very well. Well, here's a great one. Oh, yes. Jack Abbott. I don't need my glasses for this. That's a good picture. It's a great picture. I like that. Oh, I even look good in it. Cool. I'll give it. What can you say about her? What is Nikki's feelings towards Jack? I believe that if Victor did not exist, I think she would be with Jack, hopefully on a long-term basis, but that's always the hope in the beginning. But I think Jack um, suits her, although it's nothing like Victor, but it's a different kind of attraction. I think they look good together, and I think, I think he still has butterflies in his stomach over Nikki. I do, he, too. He, he doesn't want to admit that, and he tries not to, but uh, every now and then he just looks at me with this... Hang dog, look in his eyes of, I love you. <laughs> and of course I do it back, but, um, but there's such so a definitely actor. something there between them that has not gone away. They've been married twice, and uh, who knows down who the knows road. Who knows down the road. Mm -hmm. All right, here's another one. Remember this man? What was it like when with Vincent Irizarry? That was an, I don't know how they ended up together. I, I really don't either. And yeah. that, that was during the time of the running for senator story. And that's really all that I remember when I see him, when I see Vincent, I think of the senator thing that, that just overshadows everything. Although, now it's coming back to me, didn't he turn out to be bad? He was a bad man. <laughs> yes. Most of the men in Nikki's life turn out to be bad, mm. don't they? Well, I the, don't know. Not, not, some of Keith the, didn't. Yeah, and this guy didn't. Oh, oh my God, of course not. No, and he's, an, he's another one. I mean, Paul and Nikki could... 
settle and, and live together the rest of their lives and be happy under certain parameters. Like, I mean, they're, he's so good and she's probably ultimately not so good. Not, <laughs> a, not as good as Paul. Oh, he's a goody goody. He's, he's good. a goody goody, yeah. And, and they have a child. Uh, they have a child. Chilling. That story's over, though. So but I there was know. a child that. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. After the fact, it's a child. Now, here's one. I like this. I liked this coupling. Oh, Deacon and Nikki. Sean. Oh, did was this when we got married? I think so. Ah, uh, I was drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Too I drunk. Remember that. Get married. <laughs> I love Sean. I loved I working was... with Sean. We had a great chemistry, also. Very fiery. Very. Um... It kind of worked. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then towards the end there. You know, he was forcing me to do things that I didn't want to do. <laughs> so he's keeping me as drunk as possible so I would keeping go along you with drunk. it. It's terrible. Such a great story. Terrible. And Sean was so perfect for the role. Now here's a good one. Oh, Diamant. Oh, look, I'm sad here. You're sad. Oh, but I like the pink shirt. I like the pink. Pink sweater. And it's in the old Newman Ranch. I love that. Yeah, so what, was she, what did she think of Brad? I, again, I think... I think that Brad could have been very happy with her the rest of his life had she not literally dumped him at the altar. Um, but I don't know that she would have been satisfied with him her whole life. Interesting. I, as sweet and kind as he was and as romantic as he was, I don't think he possessed the fire that Nikki needs. And maybe she shouldn't care about that, but she that's what easy. turns her head. <laughs> yes, you gotta have some fire going and then you, you get her attention. Now here's one. Oh, Wings. Wings Hauser. My Wings, my Greg. I love that picture. And you see who's in the background, Hasselhoff is Hasselhoff there. Hasselhoff is there. Lurking in the background. Did you enjoy working with Wings? Oh, I adored him. We got, again, very good chemistry. Um, he was he was Nikki's first husband. It happened very early on. I would say maybe even 1979. Yeah, happened right quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, Nikki was just naive and had no <laughs> clue what she was getting into. Had no idea what being married was. But I adored working with Wings. Wings and I, before all the security happened, and and there was no Grove, and it was just the farmers market. Every morning, Wings and I would walk over, not through a turnstile or any kind of fence. We would walk over to do pars and have breakfast. Oh. And you know, now you can't, you can't do, do that so things. casually anymore. Well, here's somebody. Ah. Oh, this is the yes. love of Nikki's life. Yes. Talk to me about Victor and Eric working with Eric all of these mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. It shall I say it's a fine wine? I've never said that before. That just came to my mind. Um we went from, in the very beginning, thinking that Bill Bell had lost his mind putting us together. Because at the time, I was, Nikki was a stripper, and he was still Victor Newman, still very rich. And uh, whatever Bill saw in us individually to think that we would work well together, he never said anything to us. He let us think he was crazy for a while. And then it slowly started to happen. Mm -hmm. And we started to think, how did he know this? You know, is he like a warlock? How did Bill know that he was creating the very early stages of an epic love? One of the most epic on all time romance. in television, really. Well, thank you for that. Truly. Um, it, it just, on our parts, it happened very innocently. But uh, pretty soon, people didn't let us forget that, hey, you guys have something on camera. And we could feel it. We knew it for sure. We, we felt the sparks. We saw the sparks, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and then that just continued, continued, continued. And I think in an odd way, through Nikki and Victor, through all these years and all the stories that they have gone through, have helped educate us about each other and about each other's character. And we get the chance to see what the other character will do in a certain instance that's written in the script. I know this sounds completely wacky. No, I get I'm it. talking about <laughs> existing in another reality, another right. parallel, but this job is kind of like that. And uh, so we have the luxury of, um, well, Eric's been here 39 years, so for 30, now let's say 38 years, uh, we've had the, the wonder of watching the other work within their character to get to know that character. My lovely wife and I would like to thank you 
for gracing us with your presence and helping us celebrate this joyous occasion. Joyous. It means so much to us to have you here with us tonight as we reaffirm our vows to each other. To love, to honor, and to obey, my darling. Well, two out of three at least. <laughs> One of the other wonderful things that came out of this whole experience for you is you met your husband, Ed Scott, yes. who I also adore. And I thought it's such an, what kind of life this has all been for you, being on this show, number one show, ha meeting your husband, being a family. What can you say about all that this all has really meant to you? Again, I think that um, was a faded event. That, that simple action of accepting this job really swung my life in a, in a better direction, in a more positive direction, and as you say, brought me to my husband. Well, this year will be 35 years we're married. And as a result of that, our children, who when they were little and thought it would be fun to be an extra on the show, they could do that. That, that was a wonderful opportunity. A complete, I mean, I know a lot of actors say, taking this job changed my life. Well, I agree, it changed my life too, but I believe in a much more profound way than any other actor because it did give me so much more than just a job. And I don't mean to minimize it. It's not just a job. It's an incredible, amazing job, and I'm lucky to still be here. Uh, but it, it, did, it did affect me. You're absolutely right. Much bigger. There's somebody else who's not with us that I'm sure would want to be here for your 40th, and that's Jeannie Cooper. And we all have been so touched me, particularly, I can say, in the scenes with Catherine and Nikki, or even recently, I remember she, in the Christmas episode, one Christmas episode, she went to see Catherine, just the plaque in the park, and there was just a, a, a very sweet scene. And I love the two of you together, and she was just such an incredible woman, and I wanted to know what you think she would be saying to you on this 40th as well. Well, I don't think I can say it. It's probably too <laughs> dirty, but... <laughs> um, well... I don't know. Uh, I'll be kind and not not really quote her, but she was rather salty, of as we all she know. Was. So I'm sure it would have been something grand in that vein. Um, she again would say, "I'm <laughs> leaping proud of you, Mal," <laughs> because when I first started, she took me under her wing, as she did everybody, and uh, guided me along. I mean, I'd been acting my whole life, but not on a soap, and it's it's different on a soap. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other animal that you have to learn. And um, I remember that scene where I go to her plaque. Yeah. It, it was snowing. In, in the scene, it was snowing, and we shot it outside, and we had real snow. Um, and I, I forget it. That's another story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, a very profound moment. I, I, think I, I think I was talking to the wall. You were. And, a little crazy, talking to the wall and crying, I think I was. Um, it's, it's always sad when they have you talk to walls and actually I don't mind talking to walls. Uh, sometimes it's preferable. Or to talk to than a person, <laughs> inanimate object is usually better, right? But, uh, but yeah, uh, of course I think of her a lot. I have so many pictures of her at home that I come across and all, all the different moments that we shared together and, and sometimes we would fight. There's nothing like a good fight with Jeannie Cooper. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that was just in her, and it didn't matter. It didn't mean anything when it was over. It's like, <laughs> that's forget it. that. That's it. Yeah. I love you. Right. I yeah, love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was just the magic of Jeannie. And you've had lots of fun cat fights with Sharon Case. Ah. Uh. Yes. Do you like the cat fights that you've had with? You've had Diane Jenkins' cat fights, her cat fights. Do you like those? Or are you like, I don't like when women get down and dirty and do cat fights? Oh, I never really thought of it in a sexist way. <laughs> but now that we I, have I don't think Nikki <laughs> thinks of thing, anything in a sexist she... way. Um, Sharon and I love the cat fights. Get off this ranch. Bessie, would you like some hay? And we're always encouraging them. Do more, do more, Perhaps do more. Someone. It's, it's just fun, you know me. It's a chance to be funny, hopefully. And Sharon's the same way. We try to do our little Lucy Ethel thing. And uh, it's great fun because our characters, yeah, sometimes we'll get along. All right, I'll accept her. But we know that down deep, Nikki does not like this girl and never will. No, she never will. So to put those two together in a, an extreme situation, it's going to turn into a cat fight, and it's going to be 
very enjoyable for everybody. I heard you have to be right on your game to be in the Newman family. Like you can't come to set, you all know your lines, you cannot screw up. And if you do, you're like out the door. The first and last thing you said are not true. Okay. First thing was, we know our lines. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes we might, but um, the Newmans have, over the years, become known for learning it during rehearsal. And, and I know that's a daunting thing, certainly for a, a newcomer to the show. That terrifies them, and it should. But um, it, it seems that all of us actors who play Newmans, that's how we prefer to work. So it works out very well for us. We, we don't go to each other's rooms and run and run and run the lines. We know, we are confident we can trust any other Newman member. We know we're all gonna be, be okay when we come out. On a personal note, I gotta thank you. When I first came into this YNR family and knew people and- How long was, ago was that for you? 19... Nine, in 80 something yeah you were time. very welcoming you and your husband were very welcoming too I remember we came I remember to your, when you came to the house, the house for we come to the house for dinner yes. you were so welcoming and I and I don't know if it would have been as easy to be as accepted but you really paved the way and oh. I always wanted to thank you for oh, that and you. being such a a champion I oh, didn't me. even think anything political about it it was like <laughs> hey I like that guy let's have him come over I think we had spaghetti I think we had spaghetti <laughs> I, we did have spaghetti. You cooked. Yeah, yeah. You oh, cooked. Well, I do cook. I know you, know. you cook. You I'm cook. not Nikki all the time. No, I know. <laughs> Nikki makes reservations. I make dinner. What would you say to the fans who supported you for 40 years, who stuck by you? Is there anything you'd like to say to them for their passionate, never unwavering, they're there for you? There really are no words to explain the importance of... Um, we wouldn't be here without you. And uh, I know people say that all the time, but our fans are so passionate. You know, I, I think they're more passionate than any other show, and certainly because we've been on 45 years. Um, we're like a family member to them, and we understand that. Uh, so we won't freak out if you see us in person and go crazy because we totally get it. Um, if I had met Lucille Ball, I'd do the same thing. But, um, Which is her big thing. Yeah, yeah, big Lucy freak. Lucy Desi Center, were you <laughs> one of the I, founders? I, not a founder, but I was a board member board for member. many years. Yeah. Um, anyway, for whatever reason that you enjoy us, we are grateful, and we hope you will continue. And keep telling us exactly what you think on Twitter, because we pay attention to that. We might not change it, but we pay attention to it. Um, I, we just love you. We just love you. We we get the chance to see you every other year at the fan event, and that's always fun. But we all love you. I love you. I appreciate all the wonderful gifts and cakes and gifts that you've sent us. It's just too much, but but we like it. So <laughs> send it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the last forty years. I'm not going to say and forty more because you won't you won't want to see me on camera if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Melody. Wonderful, wonderful accomplishment and milestone. I'm so proud of you and what you've done with this role. And you meant so much to so many. Watch Melody Weekdays on The Young and the Restless. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I kiss you? <laughs> <laughs>